Meet Da Crew Podcast. We are the change we desire to see in this world. If you won't change, you have to be the change. We are looking for three more hosts to join our team. If you have a message for the world and would like to be a part of the hottest new podcast and media network rocking the podcast world right now, join Da Crew Podcast and Media Network. Looking for a little exposure allow each Tia Enterprises the opportunity to share your brand around the world. We will work with you to develop a package that fits your budget. Contact AEA via email and schedule a consultation. Crew Podcast 203 at gmail.com. We are the change we desire to see. Are you tired of the burden of past financial mistakes weighing you down? Look no further than BHG Credit Solutions, the industry leader in credit repair. We understand the challenges you face charge offs, late payments, bankruptcy, and those daunting student loans, but don't let them define your financial future. Here at BHG Credit Solutions, we've got your back. Our team of dedicated professionals specializes in turning credit adversity into opportunity. We'll work tirelessly to dispute inaccuracies, negotiate with creditors, and develop personalized strategies tailored to your unique situation. Our proven track record speaks for itself. Countless satisfied clients have seen their credits cause soar. Welcome to the SC Book Gal and Friends Chat. We're going to be talking about the latest in book reviews, author interviews, and life. Come on in and join us. We're ready. Are you? Hey everyone, I know today is Thursday and y'all thinking what in the world is she doing? But guess what? I picked up another show and I picked up another time because I still have authors for you guys to meet. And so tonight I have another author for you. Okay. So this author, you guys, her accent, her smile, she's beautiful. And I'm going to bring her up and I'm going to let her introduce yourself. Come on, Miss Ada. How are you, sweetie? I am doing just fine. I'm so yeah. glad to be here with you, Patrice. Hello, everybody. Didn't I, <laughs> didn't I tell you guys about the accent and the smile? Look at it. I told you guys. <laughs> so welcome to SC Book Gals and Friends Chat. So we're going to start our questions off like I asked all authors. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, like most people, the story is always long, but <laughs> I am um, um, I'm a transformational life coach and uh, I have, uh, I'm also an attorney and uh, I have uh, been a lecturer with the community college system. And so... I have uh, a long history of career uh, as a woman, as a, as a mom. And eventually, because of some of the things that I had gone through in life, surviving a very abusive uh, marriage situation, being able to uh, migrate from Nigeria to America and put myself through college, law school, and practice law, I see a lot of women uh, struggle. I see people who struggle with their lives and so many challenges, all because of a lot of times poor choices that we make. And often these poor choices are because we lack the information, the right information, the, the, the right foundation, the right mindset. And so you see that a lot of us go through things that we really should not go through. But because we didn't know any better, we found ourselves in those situations. So a lot of times I did some family law. I did some criminal defense and I also did business law. So one thing that is common, I noticed, is people not knowing what their life is all about, their purpose and all that. So you see us just floating in life and not realizing how important each life is. And so I started to coach people a long time ago, not realizing that's what I was doing until you know, some years back, about 
five, six years ago, I had an epiphany and in which uh, God pretty much revealed my life to me. And I stopped being afraid. I stopped being afraid of my life's purpose. I found the courage to embrace it. And so I realized that part of my purpose in life is to help bring light to those who are in darkness and to help those who are in bondage to find freedom. You know, so that's how come I pivoted into transformational life coaching. And so uh, that's my, my story in a nutshell. Um, and I'm so pleased to be here, Patrice. I'm, I'm, I'm honored that uh, you invited me to your show. Wow, that, that's a lot of hats. Do you sleep? Because that's a lot of hats you're wearing. I do. <laughs> I do. And you see, that's one of the things uh, that I discovered when I went in search of me. And I realized that, yes, everybody has 24 hours in a day. The superstars, the, the royalties, the presidents, the papa, the rich, the billionaires, the millionaires, we all have 24 hours in a day. But have you wondered how they're able to achieve so many things in those uh, uh, 24 hours? So when I realized that, I said to myself, wow, so <laughs> what have you been doing with your life? I had to buckle up. Buckle up. All right. So we're here today to talk about your book. This I Know the Presence of the Holy Spirit is Real. That title sounds a lot personal. <laughs> yes, that was my first book, actually. I was looking at the, my latest book, which is, uh, you know, the... As the you world do have another one called As the World Turns. Yes, that's, that's the newest one. It's just uh, oh. uploaded on Amazon a couple of days ago. But yes, um, this I know... The presence of the Holy Spirit is real. It's part of an epiphany I had many years ago when I was in law school, more than 20 years ago. And, uh, you know, I used to hear that the Holy Spirit arrested somebody and I would laugh at it. And I thought, <laughs> how can you be arrested by the Holy Spirit? But that was because I didn't know better. I was ignorant of, you know, and we, we tend to think that people who have such attitude are not Christians. I've been a Christian all my life, but that you go to church every Sunday does not necessarily mean that you understand your relationship with God. And when the Holy Spirit really revealed himself to me, it knocked me out because, and the, the thing is, I was at home. It's not like I had gone to any um, special event. I was at home. Mm -hmm. I, I had no idea what was going on. And I had these huge goosebumps all over me. I did not understand what was going on. But one thing became very, very obvious. I could not do without my Bible. I had to read the Bible, not just read it, study it. And I hold it like this, as if somebody was to is trying to yank it away from me. I oh. could not understand. I was so insatiable with the word of God. I would take it to law school. I, you know, for a long time, for a while, I thought maybe it was the stress of law school. I was afraid to share my experience with anybody. But mm -hmm. when I, once I got into the, the, the law library, instead of reading my law book, I found myself grabbing my Bible. It was the strangest experience. So oh. many things I was doing wrong were just coming out to me. Chapter one, but everything about my life, and I'm thinking, what is going on? And I'm a Catholic. I'm a Catholic girl, so that, that's not the kind of experience you discuss. Yeah. <laughs> so yes. Was, it was very, very strange. So, but I could not stop. Uh, reading the Bible. I could not stop praying. I could pray, just go to maybe sleep for like an hour or two. I'll still be okay. So long as I was praying or studying the Bible. 
And this was on my own. But God said, no, you sit right here. This is what I want you to do. There you go. And you go. Uh, one day, it continued. You know, when I'm coming, I lived in an apartment. Once I parked my car and I have to go upstairs to the second floor, as I'm going inside my, as I'm opening the door, my whole body is shaking with the, just, it's like, as long as I close the door, I can kneel right there and start to read the Bible. It was the strangest encounter, the strangest thing. Wow. One day, I was kneeling down praying and, you know, the, I guess my body caved in, I was tired, so I slept off while I was kneeling down, hovering over my rosary and my Bible. And at some point, it's as if somebody clapped me. When I, I looked up, I realized the lights were on. So it's, it's, I went to, um, I tried to get up. My legs had swollen because it was, my legs were numb. But I heard a voice say to me, do not be afraid. I love you. I am with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And somehow it's as if something pushed me up there. I'm, you know, like somebody pushed me forward and I, I lay on the bed, still holding, holding to my Bible and my rosary and I lay on them like that. That's how I woke up in the morning. Uh, mm. I woke up a few hours later. So I was really disturbed by this. So I called a friend of mine. She's a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. And I called her. I thought, you know, I would just talk to her friend to friend so that they don't declare me <laughs> a psychiatric problem. Right, <laughs> so, right. And I was surprised. She said to me, say, oh, Ada, so sorry. I think the Holy Spirit has arrested you. I was like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> the something that I used to laugh at. What do you mean by that? She said, look at it this way. You're not crazy. You're cutting your Bible all over the place. Nobody is preaching anything to you. It's just you and the Holy Spirit fight, slugging it out. There you go. How many people do you know? And and so it was one day in the law library. I was praying. I said, God, I don't understand what's going on. Everything I ever did wrong is coming up to me. Everything. Every day. So I said, Lord, yes. what do you want me to do? And he said, share. I was in the public library, in the, in the law library. I was in, my, in a room by myself. And he mm -hmm. said, share. I, I looked around. There was nobody there. I thought maybe somebody was walking by and said, share. You know, a lot of times we think unbelief is that you don't believe in God. Not, not necessarily. You can believe in God or think you believe in God, yet you, you are... You don't have belief because okay. of that disconnection. So you don't believe that God can talk to you. You think God is this abstract thing that can never come close to you. It, it, it's amazing how we, we relate to God and we complain. But God is there. He's God right there. Is there. Right there. Right there, right there. Never going to be. No. And you know, he is the, I'm realizing that the kingdom of God is even more real than this physical thing that we think is real. Mm -hmm. Because the kind of experience I had, I had never had anybody share that kind of story with me. I never experienced anything like that, never contemplated anything like that. So what in the world is going on? He said, share. Instead, I will maybe say, oh, thank God, that was for me. I thought, no, no, no. I was telling somebody, maybe somebody was walking outside and said something. I continued to pray. Calmly, it said, share. And so that's how this book came along, huh? Yes. There you go. So now we're coming to your new book. And <laughs> that book is like, is so relevant for the time that we're in as the world turns embracing ai for personal growth and success yes a lot of people and i will be one of those who work at a public library 
we we have a love hate relationship with AI. Yes. And I always try to tell individuals that, you know, I'm not against it because I do use it myself, <laughs> but I don't want to live by it. So how do we use AI, like you said in your title, for personal growth and success? How, how do we do that? First of all, you know, one thing that, that hinders us from being successful or from growing is fear. Fear will lock you down and make you to feel stuck. It will just blind you with darkness. You can't even see what is right in your nose. Fear is a horrible thing. And that is what is happening. The way we use AI as personal growth is first of all, recognize what it is. It's a tool. Okay. It's a tool. It's designed by people for people. It is not designed to take the place of people. Remember, it is people that innovated this. So what was their motive? Okay. Their motive is to make life better. That's the whole idea of any innovation, just like the electricity, the phone, automobile, the plane. The whole idea is to make life Easy. more easier and pleasant Easy. for everybody, at least for most people. Now, why are people so afraid of AI? Like you rightly pointed out, love, hate. That's the, from the informed perspective. But there are people who just absolutely hate it. Not because AI has done anything in particular to them, but because of the fear mm -hmm. that it's going to take over the human race, it's going to take over jobs, it's going to render people useless that none of that is true. AI, yes, there are a lot of uh, young people that I, I, you know, I have had the opportunity to counsel because they, a lot of them were imagining or planning to work with the big organizations like Google, like and, and Microsoft and all that. And it turns out that they are the first people to fire people in the tens of thousands. So mm -hmm. that's be all because of AI. Okay. So th that kind of disillusion them. It's like, okay, what's the point going to college when I wanted to be in this industry to work for this organization? So the AI is taking it over. So a lot of them are now resisting going to school or even bothering. And that's where what informed this book because I'm a coach, I'm a transformational life coach and you hear people uh, complain about things like that and you hear people now feeling stuck they don't want to do anything so you want to dig deep to find out why do you not want to do anything all right now so that's why i came back with that i came out with that book so you can use this ai yes not everybody is interested in um technology we all cannot work in the technical industry or the technology industry we're not all tech oriented, but what is life? Is life all about technology? No. So now we have technology. It can help you to do other things. What can you do? But one of the things you can do is to be receptive of technology and say, okay, it's here. Before the um, automobile came into place, how were people traveling? What kind of resistance did the people have then? What has happened? People still move around. If you want to go ride your bike, you can ride your bike, but your bike is just an option. If that's the way you want to travel within your locality. Okay. And if, yeah, if you want to travel from one city to the other, you don't have to ride your bike. Yeah, that's the more efficient and comfortable where you can do that, which is the automobile. So with time, people got used to it. The same thing comes with, uh, with um, AI, artificial intelligence. So you want to design a logo, for instance, and you don't have a budget. 
you, with the help of AI, you can do something that is not perfect, but it's something that you can live it's, with. It's like a starting point. Exactly. Okay. So, but before, how was that being done? You have to look for a graphic designer, right? And who's going mm -hmm. to design all that? For, but it's no longer that way. Now you can do it. Now, when you get to a certain level and you want something more professional, there will always be professional designers. Okay. And those professional designers will always, you know, going forward, will use AI to even produce things that are more, um, are, are much better, more solid. But now you and I, who are just starting out, we can start out with something decent. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so okay. we don't, that's one way you can use it for your personal growth and success. Now, another way you can use it is you, you can learn. You can learn the area, learn whatever subject you want to learn. You want to learn a language? Now, I do have people that do come to the library and use um, the AI technology to learn another language. So I, I do see where it can be that, like I said before, that love and hate relationship. So we're going to take a little pause for the cause, you guys. We got, you know, we got some commercials for y'all to see. But we're going to come back and we're going to spend a little bit more time. And we're going to talk about some, we're going to talk about the joy of her, or her joy of reading. So we got some more questions for you guys. Join these, enjoy these commercials and come back, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry, I survived being shot point blank range with a sawed off shotgun. Join me and share your story of survival only $33.33. Book drops in October. In publishing, we are committed to helping our authors reach their goals and pursue their dreams of becoming published authors. We work closely with each author to ensure a successful publishing experience and dedicated to helping them tell their stories in the most impactful and meaningful ways. So stop procrastinating and let's get started with writing that book. See, I told y'all the crew, we got everything for everybody. So <laughs> if you need something, you need to contact us. I'm telling you, we got something for everybody. So this is the fun part that we always do on my show. We always have those fun questions. So here's one of one fun questions. If you can co-author a book with any author, who would it be? You know, because of my life experience and uh, knowing how personal growth has helped me to get where I am, equipped me to be able to help other people. One person who knows how to touch life and help people transform, it's Oprah Winfrey. Oh, wow. Yes, and she's one of my favorite people on earth. So I would love an opportunity. I know okay, Oprah. Friend. She want to write with you. <laughs> Oprah. <laughs> and I know. Y'all Oprah look at my show. <laughs> so, um, what is... What books do you currently enjoy reading? Like, do you have a nightstand book? I have a, I have a desk books. But do you have like that one nightstand book that you're currently reading right now? I do. I have it's actually a book uh, somebody gave to me, and it the the book is staying connected to goodness. Oh. You know, and it's you know those are the kind of books that I I enjoy reading. Books that help you to see the best of humanity the best in you because if you can see the essence of god in you then you can see that in other people if you only see your faults the things that are not working chances are you're going to be cynical and you you even when somebody's being nice you want to quote it in a negative way so i like books that encourage us to be better as people encourage us to be loving kind 
and more, you know, books that help us to showcase our potential to the fullest uh, as much as possible. Book, okay. book that says that God, hey, God created you for a purpose. So, so you you seems like you enjoy those books that help you find that purpose that you're exactly. To. Okay, okay, me and you can hang out. Okay, <laughs> we can do that. So we're we're getting really close to the end of the show, and I always ask these two questions. First question: What would you like to say to your old readers, new readers, and the new readers that you're going to get after seeing this show? What would you like to say to them? Thank you. I, I love that question. What I would say to them is, life is beautiful. From my first book to this current book, if you look at it, this the central theme there is trust God, trust yourself. In my first book, it took me, after I wrote it, it took me almost 20 years to find the courage to publish it because I was battling with who is going to believe me. People are going to look at me and say, what is she, a pastor now? Why is she writing about the Holy Spirit? And so because of that, I delayed. And you know, the Holy Spirit will not let me off the hook. It continued to pester me until I had an epiphany one morning, I, you know, and I complained to another friend and he said to me, listen, I said, see that book, if you don't publish it, even if you have to give it out free to people, just publish it. If not, you will never be able to publish anything else. And I listened and I published that book and I'm grateful. So what I'm going to say to my readers is trust God, trust yourself, recognize that there is a reason why you are here on earth and nobody, nobody can fulfill that permit, uh, that reason but you. Do not allow fear or self-doubt or anything to deny you the opportunity to step out in your true potential and serve the God that created you. Yeah, that that was a whole mic drop. I mean, you that's that that's that affirmation that you can take with you. That's what I'm talking about. So of course we have to have them find a way of finding you. So my second question is where can your new readers, your old readers and your upcoming readers, where can they find you, your work? your social media handles, how can they reach out to you? Okay, first of all, uh, if you go to Amazon and type my name, I die able for my, the two books will show up. That's one. And um, I have a website, www.adaableforce.com. And also, uh, though it's under kind of a renovation, but in the next uh, few days, it should be up. It's already up, but they have not uploaded certain things. So, and then I have um, my Facebook account, which is my name. If you type my name, I die before it will show up. And then I uh, also have my Instagram, which is Ada Able for Ada underscore Able for. Also, so and at LinkedIn, it's the same thing. If you type Ada Able for on LinkedIn, my profile will, will show up. So, um, I'll also for that, you know, for you to maybe have on your website for your uh, subscribers to make it easier for them. But I don't know about the, the, the social media. I post frequently on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on um, Instagram, and the latest one, Thread. I also, I yes. <laughs> and I also post on uh, what is Twitter, <laughs> now X. Now X, yeah. When that first appeared on my phone, I didn't know what in the world was going on. I had to ask my coworker, "What is this X thing?" She said, "That's a Twitter." I said, "Oh, okay." <laughs> I said, "So we're not tweeting no more. We're Xing. What are, what are we doing now?" So, but I will make sure that everybody has your social media handles, and they will be able to contact you, um, read your book. And we thank you at SC Book Gals and Friends for joining us tonight and giving us that motivation so we can keep on and find, find the true, true us within us to make keep on going. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
Thank so you, Patrice. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm very grateful. You're welcome. Thank you. So you guys, that's another- Blessings, sh- everyone. And thank you for joining me this evening on my podcast, Take Your Life Back or Power to Live for Your Purpose. I am Gloria Anderson Littleaka, the doctor of getting it done. Here is where your life will be infused with positive enlightenment and move-aheadedness. And yes, that is a word. There will be fascinating guest. Girl get a grip chapter reviews, phenomenal money-making opportunities, and giveaways. You never know when so tune in every first and second Thursday at p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You guys, that is Miss um, Gloria. She is a new member of the pod, the crew podcast group. So make sure you guys join into her show. Thank you for joining us tonight. There is another show tomorrow night. Oh, yeah. You might see me on there and you might see somebody else you guys have always asked about. But thank you guys for enjoying us. Mr. D, thank you for joining us again. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. You know, I'm ready.